uh, let's get uh, started. So this is uh... all right. So what we'll do is we'll uh, look at discrete time signals first, and then we'll drop parallels to the continuous time counterpart. Things that are similar, we'll reinforce them so that the ideas get set in more and there will also be important differences. So we will highlight the differences so that you see what is true in continuous time probably is not true in discrete time. So we will compare and contrast and uh, see the similarities and differences. Signal as you all know is something that conveys information. So this is a quantity that conveys information. So this is the generic definition. In uh, our context, we typically use the notation x of t to denote a signal. So this is what was happening in continuous time. And this is a signal whose independent variable is called t and this in general can take on complex values. So mathematically this is a scalar function of one variable and the independent variable is called time though it need not be time but we will use the word time as a and in general this can take on complex values. And here t belongs to the set of real numbers, t spans the interval between minus infinity to plus infinity. The corresponding counterpart in discrete time is x of n and this is again in general can take on complex values. n however belongs to the set of integers. So this of course is 0 plus or minus 1 plus or minus 2 and so on. So this is a discrete time <coughs> sequence of signal. So we will interchange the use of the word sequence and a signal and unlike in the continuous time case where the independent variable can take on all values between minus infinity to plus infinity, in the discrete time case you are limited to n belonging to the set of integers. And uh, typically what you have for continuous time is something like this. So this is a continuous time signal. In the discrete time case, the independent variable is little n and little n belongs to the set of z and we have something like this. So this is 0, 1, 2, minus 1, minus 2 and so on. Um, so clearly I have plotted real value signals for ease of plotting and this is how a typical discrete time sequence looks like and this is what is called a stem plot in MATLAB notation. Uh, just to reinforce some of the differences that can arise, now let us look at uh, something. Now let us look at this particular signal where I am going to make some changes and then I am going to point out the differences. So this is now continuous time signal. This looks very similar to the discrete time sequence. In fact, I cut and pasted that figure and I have merely changed the axis 
and the point that I want to convey about this is that this continuous time signal is defined for all t. Therefore, if I now ask you what the value of the function is at say 1.5, the answer would be 0. All right. So, even though this looks like a discrete time sequence pictorially, since this is defined for all t, this is actually a continuous time signal and x of 1.5 is indeed 0. All right. Now, in contrast, so it is exactly the same uh, plotter that I drew. Okay. Now, if we ask the question what x of 1.5 is, uh, what would be your answer? So, this is undefined and it is not 0, all right, it is not 0. The analogy is you can think of a discrete time sequence as belonging to an array with the array index corresponding to n and the array value, the value that is stored in the array location as the value of the sequence itself. So, if you look at this analogy, it is meaningless to ask what is the array location 1.5. Array locations are by definition with respect to reference integer values, right. Therefore, just as it is meaningless to talk about array location of 1.5, moment the array location of 1.5 becomes meaningless, then the content at that location also is a meaningless question. Therefore, in terms of discrete, discrete time sequences, the in independent variable takes one only the set of integers and hence things like x of 1.5 is undefined or meaningless. So, this is an important difference between continuous time and discrete time. And in this course, we will only be focusing on one dimensional signals that is the independent variable will be one dimension and the value of the function also will be one dimensional. Uh, can you give an example of say in continuous time of a signal that is vector valued? The common signal that happens in a real world that is vector value. Uh, no, I am talking about the value of the function being vectors. Here, uh, x of t belongs to a set of complex numbers which is a scalar, x of n similarly belongs to a set of complex numbers which is a scalar, right. So, the dependent variable is a scalar. I am now asking the question what about an example of a real world signal where the dependent variable is a vector. Okay, yeah, electromagnetic field uh, which has various components, okay, that is good. Anything else? An ECG signal in which uh, several leads are stuck at different parts of your body and then recordings are made. The independent variable is time and yet at every instant of time you have a whole bunch of related measurements. Therefore, that you can group them as a vector, right. So, that is an example of a signal that is vector value and the independent variable is multidimensional is an image, right an image, the independent variable are uh, the x and y coordinates. The dependent variable is still a scalar here, it is just a pixel value which is a number whereas, the independent variable is two dimensional, alright. So, that is as far as a planar image goes, 
you have, if you have an image in 3D, then the independent variables are x, y, and z. All right. So there are all these several classifications of signals. The other classification that you can think of is deterministic versus random, and so on. So in this course, we'll be considering only uh, the independent variable being scalar or one-dimensional. The dependent variable also will be scalar or one-dimensional. Okay. And the independent variable will be called as time, although it need not be time. And uh, another typical classification of signals is this can either be what is called energy signal or it can be called as a power signal. Again, this is all a review. You must have seen this in uh, your signals and systems course. And these are terms that are used by electrical engineers, whereas the mathematician would use this. A signal is called an energy signal if this is finite and this is the notation should tell you what the terminology is that the math people use. And what does uh, this notation tell you? This is the two norm. This is the L2 norm of the signal. All right. And uh, so this. called as an energy signal and uh, e power t so this is e power minus t t greater than or equal to 0 so this is indeed an energy signal because this integral would be finite whereas if you had e power t for t greater than 0 this is not an energy signal and we call this energy because we are used to thinking of these as voltages and currents and if you pass if this were to represent a voltage or a current and if this were passed through a one ohm resistor then the power energy so that uh, is the reason why we are using these terms in this context and uh, for the discrete time case So this is typically what they use is they, they just say this. So this is square integrable, right? Uh, if it's an energy signal, the signal is square integrable. In terms of the discrete time case, it is square summable. So this is again energy signal and typical example is a power n for mod a less than 1 and n greater than or equal to 0 this is energy signal on the other hand if you had a power n if mod a were greater than or equal to 1 and if you look at the range n greater than or equal to 0, so this is not an energy signal. Okay. And in terms of uh, power signals, if we have x of t and then if you look at 1 over t minus t by 2 to plus t by 2. And then if you take the limit t tending to infinity, if this limit exists, then this is called a power signal. 
एन ए कॉस मेगा नॉटी प्लस थीटा इज एन एग्जाम्पल ऑफ अ पावर सिग्नल and the discrete time counterpart for this is 102n plus 1 n going from minus cap n to plus cap n so this is if this lim limit exists this is the discrete time counterpart of a power signal and uh, a cos omega not n plus theta is an example of a discrete time power signal and typically signals that are periodic are power signals can you think of a periodic signal that is not a power signal Ah, very good. If you had tan, then over one period it is not uh, integrable. Okay, that's a very good answer. So typically, power signals are periodic signals, but there are periodic signals that are not power signals. Now let us again. continue our comparisons between discrete time and continuous time uh, uh, signals 